culture is king, don't be a peasant. That is the title of this video and this is what we're going to talk about today. It is the most important thing you can have in your company outside of providing great results for your clients and that is culture. How do you build a team culture of people that love showing up to work on a regular basis, of people that genuinely respect you as the leader, and again, most importantly, is longevity. Just because they respect you today does not mean they're gonna respect you tomorrow. And I really wanna break down how to build great culture in this video. I wanna talk about my personal experiences when it comes to the culture that we have in our company. Even previous experiences when I wasn't a CEO of a company, when I was a salesperson, and even previously when I was working in companies like selling cars. And I really hope that this video gives you a lot of value. If so, please like, subscribe, and share this so that way other people can learn how to build an amazing culture with their company so that way they can grow, they can develop, and most importantly, they can be here in the long run or maybe even sell their company, right? Maybe that's something that you guys wanna do. At the end of the day, Either or, you need a great culture. The very first thing about culture is knowing what are your core values? What is it that you guys stand for as a company? Normally core values need to be between three to five, but you know me, I like to be a little bit different. We have six core values. And I actually love abbreviations. I'm a big abbreviation guy. My first company, Fava, is an abbreviation for freaking awesome virtual assistants. Here are the core values that we have in our company that I put into abbreviation, which go by par, Pick, P-A-R-P-I-C-K. What does that mean? The reason that I was playing around with our core values and trying to put them in a, in a way that it makes sense. The reason this is so genius is because we are picking candidates and there's a par that our clients have them, right? We're picking candidates for ourselves and there's a par that we have on a regular basis in our company. So what does that look like? P is proactive. I am looking for people that are proactive, that are always looking for solutions, that are always one step ahead of the problem and that are genuinely seeing the company, not as it is today, but as it's going to be in the next two years, three years, five months, whatever the case is. The next one is A, which is accountability. Every single person in my company holds this themselves accountable. And that starts with me. Whenever there are mistakes being made, whenever we drop the ball with someone, I don't blame anybody in my company, I blame myself. I ask myself, how did I let my team member down like this where they dropped the ball? I take full responsibility for my team and guess what happens when I do that? They take full responsibility of themselves and their actions because they know at the end of the day, we are accountable for everything that we do in our work life and in our personal life. The next one is R, which stands for the right thing. Doing the right thing. Guys, if you have team members that are lying about their numbers, that are deceiving you and they're not doing the right thing over and over again, guess what's gonna happen? Your company is going to go down and you're not gonna have a company anymore, okay? And this doesn't have to be with just team members. This also has to do with you, whether you're CEO or lead manager or whoever is watching this video. You gotta do the right thing every day, right? That is showing up, that's doing the little things, putting your numbers, that's hitting KPI. Do the right thing every single day. This should not come as a question. The next one is the letter P, which stands for positivity. Guys, listen, life is crazy. We're entering some weird times. Nobody knows what's happening in the US, in the world. We gotta leave all of that outside. What matters right now is staying positive, is knowing that you're showing up to a company that is making a change, right, in your life, in the client's life, and whatever it is that you guys are focusing on. We have to be positive every single day, no matter what happens. Now, if you have some crazy tragedy, emergency that happens, guys, take the day, go take care of business. Even if you need to take a couple days, go take care of business. Because when you step foot into our company, into the company you're working for, into the company you guys are leading, you must be positive. Especially if you are the leader, if you are the person people are looking for, if you are the manager, if you are leading team meetings, whatever the case is, stay positive no matter what. Leave the BS outside and focus on what's at hand and make sure that your team knows that. The next letter is I, which stands for interdependent. In that word, you have the word independence, which is obviously important. We need people to be independent. But interdependence means that we are working as a team. Every person is dependent on other people. That is something that is very important to us because we're a recruiting company. So we are dependent on our recruiters, on our interviewees, on our connectors, on our client success people to take care of candidates, to take care of clients. Make sure that we connect the right people with the right companies, okay? So we are dependent on each other, but at the same time, we're independent. We know that we have to provide for the company in order to be here in order to get results, in order to help people, 
Okay, this is something that matters to us a lot. And some of you guys, you don't need to be interdependent. You might not have interdependent companies. You have more independent companies. That's okay, figure it out for yourself. The next letter is C, which is candor. Okay, C-A-N-D-O-R, candor, which is freedom of expression. Okay, this is super important to me. I need my team to be very expressive with how they feel, okay, whether it's about the role, whether it's about the client, whether it's about the task that's at hand. I need them to be expressive because the more expressive they are, the more we can build from it. We can build SOPs from it, we can take the project on another direction. Maybe I'm thinking something that is a, seems like a great idea on paper, but then guess what? It's a crappy idea that's not gonna get us anywhere, okay? I need my team members to feel expressive, and how you do that is by becoming a leader that your team members trust. You get to know them on a deeper level. A lot of you guys have team meetings regularly, right? Maybe daily, hopefully daily, but some of you guys don't have them every single day. No matter what, guys, take the time to get to know your team members, right? Even if it takes 20, 30 minutes, even if it's on a monthly basis, what are your team members like outside of work? Do they have families? Are they married? Do they want to get married? Are they single? What are they into? What do they like to do outside? I have a great grasp of every single person that's currently working here of what they are like as a person because I get to spend a lot of time with them. One of the things that I do is at the end of the month, I do performance reviews with every single team member and I go over a list of 10, mm, it's closer to 15 to 20 questions and they're different for each department. And some of those questions can get a little bit personal because I wanna get to know you on a deeper level, right? The way you keep team members long-term is not just paying them more and giving them more opportunity, that's very important, but it's also creating a real bondship with them. That is pretty difficult to do when you have team members in other parts of the world where you only meet them on Zoom, they have completely different cultures, which means that communicating with them is super important. So this goes back to one of our last core values, Candor, where I need them to be expressive and express themselves. And sometimes it takes people a little bit longer, okay? At the end of the day, what matters, being able to express themselves, not just to me, but to the rest of the team. They feel free, they don't feel like they're in prison and they can't tell me their thoughts or ideas. I need them to express that. And at the end of the day, the only way that happens is if your team freaking trust you. Build trust with your team by hopping on calls, by getting to know them, by getting to know what they want out of life, out of this opportunity. What are their goals? What are their ambitions? What is their why? What drives them? Okay, and this sometimes takes multiple calls, multiple months to figure out, but when you do, make sure you relate to that point, right? I have a few team members with kids. Guess what I bring up every single time I talk to them? I talk about their kids, I ask how they're doing, I ask how I can help, how can I support them? That makes them feel like, I'm part of their family and that's what I want because they are part of my family. When I bring you into my company, you're under payroll, you're now part of my family. You're part of what I wanna build, okay? And family has each other's backs no matter what, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And last but not least is the letter K, which stands for Kaizen. And Kaizen is all about improvement. It's showing up and it's improving every single day. What I ask my team members is not 100% improvement or 90, I ask them to improve 1% every single day. Over the course of the year, that's 365% improvement. That's crazy amount of improvement, okay? How do you improve? Number one, you show up. Number two, you do something that you care about. Number three is you track what you're doing on a regular basis. Number four, you have a vision of what you're currently doing and what is that gonna look like over the next day, over the next week, over the next month. And number five is that you enjoy what you're doing. I just touched about this, you gotta enjoy what you're doing. If you do not care for what you do on a regular basis, you're not gonna wanna do it. And if you do, it's not gonna be done in the most way possible, okay? So, Power Pick is our core values. So when I get on an interview with someone, when I introduce them to the team, when I onboard them, they know the core values from the very beginning and they feel like, oh man, this is exactly what I stand for. I stand for X, Y, Z because of this. This is the kind of person I am. And if they don't, and we feel like we can't mold them into this, then we're not gonna hire them. But sometimes I can create someone and I can help them become an interdependent person. But there are certain things that is very hard to create. For instance, it's very hard to make someone positive if they're a negative person. I don't like to do that. Out of our current core values, there are certain ones that are non-negotiable. The first one is being proactive. I cannot help you if you're not a proactive person. I cannot help you if you're not a positive person. And I cannot help you if you are not looking to improve and get better over time. Freedom of expression, being interdependent, I can teach you and that can take time and I'm okay with that. Going back to you guys, what are your core values? 
What is it that you and your company stand for? If you don't know what core values should look like, there's a chapter in the book Traction that actually goes into detail about how to build your core values. It's actually how we built ours. I read the chapter, I sent it to my team, and we came up with these core values. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, guys, if you're looking to build amazing, impeccable culture, it's one of the things that I just talked about, and that is by having team meetings, and even more importantly, is to have individual calls. If you have less than 15 to 20 members on your team, you should know everybody's story. You should know what everybody's doing, what everybody's goals and KPIs are. That is why you have a small company. That's why you have a small business, right? When you have hundreds of people, you're gonna put leaders into those positions to help out with that. When you have 20 team members, you should know what's this person doing on a regular basis? What are their KPIs? Are they hitting it? If not, why not? That's the first thing. And then more importantly, is what is this person about? What do they wanna get to in the next one or two years? They're here now, how can I help them get to step B? Right, then step A, they wanna to get to step B. Can we help them? Is this, is this possible inside of the company? Whether it's financially, whether it's with an opportunity, or if not, how do we help them get there? That is your job as a leader. And something that a lot of people miss is that when they're building a team culture, they're doing it like they're building a team culture around robots. And all they care about is business, KPIs, and the work. Instead of caring about the person, instead of getting to know who these people are. Guys, this, these are people, I don't care where they're at, the Philippines, in Colombia, Argentina, Mexico, Pakistan, I don't care. At the end of the day, we're all humans. We all have emotions, okay? We all feel. Now the question is, do they feel like working for you or do they feel like bouncing around and they feel like just making money and leaving? Because sometimes it is hard to get a lot of things out of people. At the end of the day, are you putting the effort in? Are you asking the right questions? Are you showing them that you're there for them instead of just telling them you're there for them, right? Sometimes people need an advanced pay. Are you doing that for them? Sometimes people need other types of opportunities. Are you giving that to them? Building team culture is all about finding the right people, putting them in the right spots, and making sure you know every person on a deeper level. Again, especially if you have under 20 employees or contractors. As you grow and scale, you're gonna have leaders that are responsible of knowing each person's performance, whether they're hitting KPI, and again, most importantly, are they the right person for the role, right? Are they here to really grow with the company? Are they here to really take the company to the next level? Or are they just here to waste your time? And that's what you guys have to ask yourself. A few months ago, I met a lady by the name of Lauren Tickner. She's very well known in the space. She's a freaking absolute savage of a business owner, of a CEO. I look up to her. I've actually looked up to her for many years and I got the pleasure of meeting her in Medellin. She came to a few dinners. She became a friend now. And she said something very interesting to me. We actually met up at, at an event in Go High Level uh, where she actually spoke. She said something very interesting. She said, if you are embarrassed of bringing your team to high level events, you have the wrong team members. She asked her COO, hey, do you think if we had all of our team members come to this particular event, they would make us look great and we would feel proud of them being here or would we be embarrassed? And they looked at each other and they said, we would be pretty freaking embarrassed. We do not wanna have this, this person at this event. And guess what? Immediately they fired everybody. So if you have people on your company right now that you would feel embarrassed to take with you to high level events, to whether they're corporate events, whether they're coaching events, whether they're masterminds, man, you have the wrong people in your company. You should not feel embarrassed about anybody in your company because every single person, when they're showing up to work, when they're outside of work, when they're at a bar, when they're at a club, when they're at a family event, they're representing you and your company. People that are working for you represent you every single day, right? Whether it's the nine to five, whether it's after work, they're going to the gym, they're going out, they're going on a hike, they're representing you and your company. So if you do not have people that you're proud of bringing to every event that you attend, you have the wrong fucking people in your company. Don't be the company that just hires people to get the job done and to get the result. Be the company that hires people that actually cares, not just about the production and the result, which is obviously important, but also cares about the person, cares about the people you have. You wanna meet them, you wanna get to know them. You want them to be in your life, right? Whether it's right now, whether it's years from now. I think longevity, I'm 27 right now, will be 28 very soon. When I'm 38, I potentially have kids, I'm potentially married, I want my team members to be aware of that. I want my team members to come to my fucking wedding. And if you don't have that with your team members, you're hiring the wrong people, okay? And this is very hard. 
It's very hard, it's actually impossible to build a team culture with the wrong people. To wrap it up, number one, it's to hire the right people in the first place, something that we can help you with. Number two, have core values in place. Number three, have meetings on a regular basis and not just team meetings, but individual meetings, right? Get to know every single person on a deeper level, know what they want out of life and see if you can help them. And last but not least guys, do this because you're looking to build something long-term. And if you're looking to exit, that's fine, you still need to do this. But think three, five, 10, 20 years from now, especially if you're a young guy, you're watching this video, you're 27, 28, 30 years old, Think long-term. If this person is a freaking rock star, if they do everything right and they're an amazing human being, you want them by your side forever. Just like if you find the right girl, she's beautiful, she's smart, she has her shit together, she's doing everything right, you want that girl by your side forever. If this video helps you guys out, please like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to do more of these videos, provide as much value to you guys. One of the things that I wanna talk about before I go is my experiences, right? If you guys message any of my team members, I truly believe they love working here because I treat them like human beings, I get to know them. I've worked in companies before, guys, that that was not the case. I had rude bosses, I'd had bosses that overreact to little things, I had bosses that mistreated me, I had bosses that just really didn't give a single shit about me, and that's not with the company culture that I wanted to build. I told myself, if I'm ever a freaking CEO, I'll make sure to take care of my people. I really believe that if you reach out to every single team member of mine, they respect me, they wanna meet me, if they haven't yet, they are happy at the job they're doing, they're getting paid well, they see the light of the tunnel for their position, they know what I want them to do over the next few months, for the next couple years, they see leadership in the future, they see leading other departments, they see doing other things in the company, they're super sold on what we're doing, and that is everything I've ever asked for. And I'm truly best to be in the position I am, I'm super grateful, and hopefully if you're watching this video and if you watch it this far, we could potentially work together. Maybe we can find you a career. Maybe we're, you're a business owner looking to hire. Maybe you're in Medellin, Colombia and you wanna connect with me. Anything is suave. So guys, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching this. Like, comment, subscribe to this. Share this video with your friends, anybody that's looking to be a, build a team culture. And I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the other side.